Hi, I'm Laura, the library lady, and welcome to today's episode. If you're looking here, you see I have another friend with me. I have all types of friends that come visit me for our episodes. Can you tell me what this person does? This person is an astronaut, and they have on a space suit with a pack. Maybe they're doing a spacewalk. Did you know in space there's zero gravity? That means that there's nothing that holds you to the ground. If you jump up, you just keep moving. It's just a slow motion. So we're going to continue today this week's theme of nonfiction books. Last week we did series. So this is a series of nonfiction books. This says right here. I want to be. So that is the series. I want to be. They write all kind of books about different professions. And this says, I want to be an astronaut. Other series they have are, I want to be a chef, be a dancer, an engineer, and a veterinarian. So we're thankful for uh, Harcourt, Grace, and Company for uh, publishing this book. And we also have uh, the Maze Productions to thank. And isn't this a great picture of a family all pretending to be astronauts? So, did you ever think of being an astronaut, boys and girls? Well, if you have, this is the time to think about it more. So, our objective today in this episode is to learn what it takes to be an astronaut. And this is an older book. It's from my personal collection. So there may be new. This is from 1997. So there may be updates and uh, more recent information about astronauts. But what we have here will get you started. So look at that picture. We have two astronauts here. Can, uh, says, where to start? What do you start when you think about being an astronaut? Can you picture yourself in a spacesuit? Do you dream about traveling in space or going to other planets? Can you imagine climbing aboard a space shuttle? Astronauts, astronauts Bernard H. Harris, who's right here, boys and girls, and C. Michael Vole had dreams like yours that came true. The astronauts blasted off on the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1995. In this, peer, in this picture, Harris, Top, and Fole are on their way out to the shuttle orbiter for some extracurricular activity, which they call EVA. This means they're getting ready to leave the vehicle for a spacewalk, protected by their high-tech spacesuits. Harris was payload commander and Fole was a mission specialist on the flight. Payload crew members are scientists or engineers who run and analyze experiments during a mission. Mission specialists are technical scientific astronauts who also run experiments in flight and work with the pilots to keep the shuttle running smoothly. Whether you hope to fly the shuttle or to supervise experiments on board, Taking math and science courses now will help prepare you. These two astronauts studied hard to get into the space program. Harris earned a doctorate of medicine at Texas Tech. Fole earned a doctorate in astrophysics from Cambridge University in England. Education is essential for astronauts. Fields in which they train include Mathematics, astronomy, engineering, geology, chemistry, biology, physics, and electronics. Although you don't have to be a champion athlete, fitness is important too. You must be in tip-top physical condition to go into space. So prepare your body with healthy food and exercise. And boys and girls, I would also include rest. You need to make sure you get enough rest as well. So I'm going to read another page or two because this is a very nice book. It says here, looking back at Earth. 
If you ever travel into space, you will be able to gaze back at our planet and see the many shapes and patterns on Earth's surface. Until then, take a look at these postcards from shuttle missions. Cameras aboard spacecraft have recorded thousands of detailed images of our planet. In the background of the facing page, pale shades of blue reveal shallow lagoons around the Bahamas. The dark blue shows channels between the islands that plunge 1 to 2,000 miles deep. The smaller images above provide other views of our planet's diverse geography. At left, as an inferred image of a river delta on the island of Madagascar, it records how years of heavy erosion have filled the waterway. The center image shows the peaks of the Andes range in Argentina in South America. The shot was made with a handheld camera from the space shuttle Atlantis. In the third picture above, you can see a vast area of sand dunes in the Sahara Desert. The nose of the space shuttle Atlantis is silhouetted against a half-globe portrait of Earth as at the far right. The photograph was taken with the U.S. shuttle when the U.S. shuttle was docked at the Russian Mir space station in 1995. Imagine what kinds of images will come back to Earth from a sp spacecraft in the 21st century. And boys and girls, this was written before the 21st century, and now we're in the 21st century, the second decade. And unfortunately, we're facing a pandemic. But please take a look at these pictures. See how beautiful the Earth was in 1995. And let's hope we can keep our Earth beautiful and safe and productive for you to grow up in and the generations to come. So we have to take care of our Earth, boys and girls. I'm going to read one more page, and then I'm going to talk a little bit, and then I'm going to let you go. Living in space is very different than living on Earth. Look at these pictures. Remember, there's zero gravity, so there's nothing you holding you down, so you're floating everywhere and everything else is floating. That seems like it would be fun, but it's very challenging, especially when you're born on Earth. So um, this says, in space you have to take care of yourself as you do on Earth, but it's more difficult. At right, astronaut W.B. Lennar an electrical engineer by training, ties his hands, tries his hands at being a barber. He trims the sideburns of Space Shuttle Columbia's pilot Robert O'Meara during a mission in 1982. Aboard uh, the Endeavor in 1992, Japanese astronaut Mora lathers up for a dry shampoo. So we see the first picture here where they're trying to cut hair. So if your hair won't stay down, how do you cut it? It's constantly floating. So how do you cut your hair? And in this picture, he's trying to wash his hair. But when you're on the space shuttle, you have very limited water because water is very, very heavy and it's more important to drink water than to wash your hair with it. See here on Earth, many of us have plenty of water to drink and to wash our hair, but many people don't. So just having water. I'm going to read one more paragraph. Washing your hair, brushing your teeth, having a snack, going to the bathroom, getting some exercise, or taking a snooze all sound like ordinary things to do, don't they? How about performing all those daily tasks while you're weightless? And the tools you need to use are weightless too. That's the challenge astronauts deal with every day while they are on a mission. They use lots of scrap straps to hold them hold things down. Even the toilet has a seat belt. Because <laughs> boys and girls, you have to remember for every action there's a reaction. You learn that in physics. So if I'm sitting and I'm 
going to the bathroom, there's an action that's pushing me down. So I may be on the toilet, and when I go to the bathroom, I pop up. That's why there's a seatbelt. Now you may say, Laura, the library, how do you know so much about astronauts and what happens in space? Well, boys and girls, a long time ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Texas and Oklahoma and visit astronauts and visit the uh, space center where they train astronauts in Texas. And that's where I learned so much about astronauts. And I actually got an opportunity to see a real live space shuttle. And I got this little gal, and I say gal, it could be a gal or a guy, when I was there. So I went to Oklahoma State University where they have this outstanding NASA program. And NASA is the organization that is, or agency that's funded by our federal government that does the space pro program. And we have many people to thank for the space program. One of them is former President John F. Kennedy, because he wanted to make sure the Russians didn't know more about space than we did. Now, since that time in the 90s, I've had the pleasure of meeting more astronauts, I think three in all. And I have one uh, friend who's a, who's a former church member who is, I think, well, she was supposed to go up in the space shuttle. And sure enough, she has a PhD and her twin sister has a PhD. So you can be a girl or a guy, you can be African American, you could be European American, it doesn't matter. If you have a thing that you want to do, if it's sailing or if it's flying in space, or if it's curing cancer, you can do it. But you have to study hard, you have to be disciplined, and you have to take care of yourself. And don't worry, if you work hard, people will support you. We want you to be successful in whatever you do. So that's all for today's episode, boys and girls. I'm going to play with my astronaut friend here. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye!